In this part we will analyze the query time and the size of the data structure that we just constructed in the previous part. So we, first we want to figure out the query time, we want to find out what is the time for a fixed query point Q. So that means we want to compute what is the length of the path from the root of our data structure of our DAG to Q. Let's first look at it without the randomization. So we have our data structure here and how much longer can a query path become at one step? Well, when we add a segment, we basically get three new separators. We get the segment itself, we get the vertical ray on the right, and we eventually get the vertical ray on the left. So there can be three new interior nodes on the path to some trapezoid where our queue lies in. So in every step, the height increases by at most three. That means that T of Q is at most three N. So it's at most linear, but linear is not enough for us. We want to do order of log n, and we want to show expected running time order of log n. So we want to the expected behavior, we want to average the query time over all n factorial insertion orders, which is just the permutations of these n segments. That's a bit much to analyze, so we want to use our trick from the one-dimensional case again. So we need some random variable, and the random variable xi tells us the number of nodes, of interior nodes, that are added to the query path in iteration i. And we know that our segment set and the query point, they are fixed, so this random variable only depends on the insertion order of our segments. And we know that xi is at least 0 and at most 3. So the expected path length from the root to Q is at most the expected value of the sum of all these i's. So the sum of all the interior nodes that were added to the query path to Q in all these steps i. And with the linearity of the expected value, we only have to sum up the expected values of xi. But how do we do this? Now we don't have a 0, 1 variable anymore, but this can be 0, 1, 2, 3. And then still we have to figure out how to do this, probably again with the backwards analysis. For that we want to look at our variable pi. pi is the probability that the search path of q contains any node that was created in iteration i. So we here we counted how many there are, but this just tells us is there at least one. Then the expected value of our xi is the sum of all these values that it can be. It can be 0, 1, 2, or 3. But this is at most 3 times the probability that this is at least 1. So we get at most 3 times pi. So this basically tells us it doesn't matter if there's one, two, or three you know, interior nodes on the path, I will always count it as three. That's fine for me. That's fine for the analysis we want to do, we can overcount. So let's just figure out what the probability is that there is anything that was added in iteration i, then we can multiply it by three, since we only want uh, to have asymptotic behavior, times three doesn't matter. So now let's have a look at the trapezoid in our data structure in the trapezoidal map of step i that contains q. And the key idea is that in step i we add a node to the query path of q if and only if this trapezoid changes. So if in step i it lies in the same trapezoid as in step i minus 1, then the query path is the same because we only change things locally. But only if this trapezoid was destroyed and we get a new one, then we add at least one node to the query path. So that means that this trapezoid must have been created in iteration i. And when does a new trapezoid get created? Only if it lies close to the new segment that gets inserted. And in particular it has to be adjacent to it, so it either has to use some part of the segment or it must have the end, one of the endpoints of the segment on its boundary. So let's have a look what can happen. How can this trapezoid be created? It could be that part of SI is the top side, or part of SI is the bottom side, or it could be that the right endpoint of SI is the left point of this trapezoid, 
or the left end point of SI is the right point of this trapezoid. So there are four cases, and for each of these four cases we have to figure out what is the probability that it happens. And then the data structure is uniquely determined by SI. So we can assume that SI is fixed. So this does not depend on the insertion order anymore. And one trick we want to use is that the trapezoidal map of SI that is uniquely determined by the set of segments. So for just the trapezoidal map, it doesn't matter in which order we inserted the segments. That only matters for our data structure D, but the map is exactly the same. So we have a fixed SI, we have a fixed trapezoidal map, and the trapezoid that contains Q in step I is always the same. This is fixed. This does not depend on the insertion order at all. So we have a fixed trapezoid, we have our fixed point, we have our fixed segments, and we only want to figure out if this trapezoid lies on the segment SI. So the probability we want to find that there is some node on the search path to Q that was created in I is the probability that this trapezoid changes when we insert our random SI. And for that we can use the backwards analysis. The probability that it changes when it's inserted is the same that it changes when SI is removed. And we have our four cases. So if we figure out for some fixed trapezoid, what is the probability that the top boundary is SI? What is the probability that the bottom side is SI? Or that the left point belongs to SI or that the right point belongs to SI, then we know exactly what is the probability that this one would get destroyed when we remove SI. And just look at one case. The probability that the top side of this trapezoid is SI, they are exactly I segments. And if we pick a random SI, so the probability that this is the one that gives us the top side is exactly 1 over i. And the same we can apply to the bottom and to the left point and to the right point. So for each of these the probability is at most 1 over i. And that means that the probability that w at least one of those four cases is true is at most the sum. So we have at most 4 over i for the probability that this trapezoid changes. And that means if we plug it in into our expected value, the expected value of xi is at most three times the probability that something changes because it has at most three nodes. This is at most four over i, so we have at most 12 over i here, and then we have 12 times the harmonic function, so we have order of log n query time. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove. In the expected case, the query time is order of log n. There's one more thing. We still have to show that the size of the data structure is linear. But this is very similar, so we will do it a bit shorter. So for the size, we need another random variable that tells us how many interior nodes are added in total to our data structure in iteration i. And the size that we get for our data structure in total is the number of leaves that we have. And the leaves are exactly our trapezoids in the trapezoidal map. So this is the size of the trapezoidal map plus the number of interior nodes that we have. And since it's uh, randomized, we can sum up the expected value of the number of interior nodes that we add in every step. And now for the trapezoidal map, we already know from our earlier lemma that this is linear. So we have a linear number plus the sum of the expected values of the interior nodes that get added. So how can we bound xi? We need a second variable. And that second variable that depends also on a fixed trapezoid. If I look at a fixed trapezoid, this tells us one, if this trapezoid disappears when SI is removed, and zero otherwise. This is exactly what we did in the previous step. And remember, uh, for the query time, we had a fixed triangle. And we figured out what is the probability that this fixed triangle changes when SI is removed. And that probability 
for a fixed triangle was exactly 4 over i. So the expected value of yi for every fixed trapezoid is again at most 4 over i. So now if I want to figure out how many trapezoids in the expected case get destroyed, we just sum up over all trapezoids what is the expected value that it disappears. And for each of them the expected value is 4 over i, and we know from here that we have at most 3i plus 1 trapezoids. So the sum of this is at most 3i plus 1 times 4 over i, which if we multiply it out is 12 plus 4 over i, or at most 13. And then we can plug this in. Now the size of the size of the trapezoidal map, which is order of n, plus the sum of all these expected values for every i, so we have order of n plus at most 13n, and this is again linear. And now we showed that the query time is order of log n, the expected size is order of n, and since the construction only depends on the size and the query time, we also for free get the expected construction time of order of n log n. And this concludes the proofs and the construction of our data structure. Thank you for watching.